There are some very intriguing things about to happen in Dragon Ball Super Chapter 63 going into Maris and Moro's fight, including Beerus finally showing up to the battlefield, Maris powering up to the point where his halo appears, Goku probably tapping into Mastered Ultra Instinct, and Maris's unfortunate fate. But before we get into it all, make sure to become an S-Class hero by subscribing to the channel. So a very special thanks to Dragon Ball Hype on Twitter for this summary, as Maris and Moro do battle, Dende essentially heals everyone starting with Goku, because obviously he is the most in danger of dying with a hole in his chest, and right afterward joins the fray against Moro. Now during this, while Maris is fighting Moro, parts of his body kind of start to disappear. Now this seems to be like an automatic reaction of the whole angel code, because Maris uh, essentially needs to put out too much power in order to fight Moro. Um, so Goku steps in, and I think what he says in this panel, something to the effect of, I think I've got the hang of it or something like that, talking about Ultra Instinct Omen, meaning that he can probably hold the form without any stamina issues, which would be fine and dandy to me because as we see, the stamina issues here in Ultra Instinct Omen are irrelevant as we have this awesome panel of Goku trying to kick Moro and Moro just easily dodging him and he easily knocks the shit out of Goku. So one might think that that whole scene of Goku stepping in would be irrelevant, but I think what they're doing here is kind of showing the friendship that built between Goku and Maris during their time in the hyperbolic time chamber. And Goku obviously doesn't want Maris to get erased for violating the angel code. So he's stepping in to try to essentially save his friend by defeating Moro, <laughs> you know, even though he probably knows that he, he doesn't have a chance really. But that's not even that interesting compared to what happens next in that Moro uses his strategy and his copies of Piccolo to go into the ground with his arms, to go up behind Maros through the ground and grab his neck. Now the first time I saw this, I thought, oh my god, I, you know, so many people thought if he grabs Maris's neck, it's over. Like Moro, angelic Moro, that is, that's just no. Instant death for everything. But Maris is more resilient than that in that he summons his freaking angel stab. Now I think this is what kind of cements his fate here in that he starts using his angel staff. And actually the way that he uses is, is pretty freaking brutal, you know, and actually does serve to help the heroes in a huge way because he nullifies Moro's ability to copy. What he does is when Moro is airborne, he uses his staff like a freaking sniper rifle and snipes the gem through Moro's hand. And then the other time he uses it as a freaking javelin or something and pierces his hand on the ground, destroying the gems, which I think are the source of the uh, copy techniques ability. So without those gems, he can't do the copy technique, which means he can't copy Goku and possibly get instant transmission or, uh, you know, Ultra Instinct, although one could argue that since he has Vegeta's copy, he may be able to do instant transmission, but who knows? Maybe that'll be just another freaking thing Moro pulls out of his ass to get another one up on the heroes. But this is the point where Maris kind of seals his fate, I, I, so to speak. In this panel here, Goku is saying, uh, essentially, no, Maris, stop because Maris is powering up so much that his angel halo is starting to appear. Now, this he charges at Moro, and this is why I think that their friendship dynamic is very at the forefront of this chapter. Maris is thinking back to when they're in the time chamber, probably developing a friendship with Goku, and he wants to save them. Uh, he wants to defeat Moro and save them, his friend, instead of before he wanted to defeat Moro to, you know, protect the galaxy or whatever. But now he's willing to sacrifice his existence, his very existence, to save his friend. That's some, that's some freaking powerful stuff right there. Like, Maris, in this chapter, seems to be a very uh, good character. Um, so he smashes, this is enough, God damn man, it's one like crazy thing after another with Maris. After powering up, he smashes Moro in the freaking forehead, which 
I don't know the implications of that, but every time Moro or Seven Three switched to a copy, it showed up in that in the gem in his forehead. So I'm thinking that M Moro is Moro Seven Three can't switch copies now. But that's just a little theory that I have. I mean, we'll have to wait till the translations actually come out. So while Maris uh, is charging up and his halo appears, he be starts becoming transparent because his existence is, is leaving. And that's probably why he had to charge in so quickly. But this is the moment when Beerus and Whis show up. Why they show up, I'm not entirely sure. It seems that Whis might have some sort of concern for his younger brother because in this panel he says ototo which means little brother i'm not exactly sure what else he says here but um that's some interesting stuff weiss and beerus being on the battlefield though there i'm not sure how i feel about that i don't i don't like their presence there just like in resurrection f i didn't like their presence there you know i think that they need to find some other creative way to keep them off the battlefield because we need the tension to be on our heroes that we care about like Goku and Vegeta and you know Piccolo Gohan. So with that Maris's fate is sealed and this last panel showing him drifting off into nothingness is, is very touching actually. The expression on his face is really well done. It actually kind of looks like he's got just got snapped by Thanos. <laughs> But from my own translation, it looks like he's telling Goku to protect uh, the universe, essentially. So, uh, the, the look of contentness on his face tells me that he knows that he did the right decision. And he's happy with the decision that he made. Granted, it cost him his existence. But the good that he did do is going to allow our heroes to, you know, survive this. You know, Moro 7-3 without his copy ability or without the ability to switch copies possibly. Or maybe even not have copies at all. Now, wouldn't that be an advantage for our heroes or just eliminating an advantage that Moro had? So he still has all the power that he has, but he can't utilize like forced spirit fission or anything like that. Which actually makes me think that Gogeta is a possibility here. So Whis kind of reacts a little bit to Maris's death. He says something about Ototo, which means little brother. So he might be a little stirred up about Maris's death here. And I think that is another dynamic that uh, could be have some really interesting possibilities to explore in the future but the very last panel and granted we don't know why Whis and Beerus are here or what you know role they're gonna play in this entire thing like Beerus could get involved but Whis couldn't get involved without getting erased but the last panel here is Goku is upset what is when is the last time we saw Goku this upset and even beyond to where you're seeing you're seeing the sound effects of what he's feeling. Um, so actually really powerful stuff so far, and I hope the actual English dialogue doesn't ruin any of it. Uh, but I think this chapter is really um, dark and kind of kind of thick with its thematic elements between Maris and Goku, you know, and their their kind of friendship dynamic. I think that's uh, some interesting stuff there. But, uh, you know, Moro, he's in trouble now. <laughs> Goku is most surely going to get Mastered Ultra Instinct, and I think that this last panel is very, very much telling of that. And, you know, whenever Goku gets mad... Well, let's just say that hell hath no fury like Goku when you hurt his friends. But that being said, to be honest, I will not like it if Mastered Ultra Instinct Goku took out Moro. At least not by himself. So with that being said, thanks a lot for watching the video. Take it easy.